Hi, I'm Kendrick. We're cooking for love today. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Happy Cinco de Mayo, and I'm Kathleen Hall with the Mindful Living Network. Well, Kendrick and I did a little fishing into this holiday Cinco de Mayo because we've heard it was the independence of Mexico, mm -hmm. it was a battle, all this other stuff. Then we found out mm -hmm. that it's a, actually a fake holiday. Now it, it can is. be told. Mm -hmm. Unlike fake news, this is really fake. Yep. Fake, fake, fake. So we found out that, do you know that they sell more beer on Cinco de Mayo than they do at St. Patty's Day and Super the Bowl. Super Bowl? Isn't that just crazy? It's made up by the beverage companies yeah. to was sell more beer. Was it genius though? Beer. Was yeah. it genius? It was. Great marketing. I'm serious. Yep. You wouldn't want a marketing company like that or an yeah. ad agency. Right. Love it. Yep. But anyway, uh, so what we want to do is we need every opportunity we can to celebrate, don't we? Mm -hmm. we Especially do. nowadays, we need to we celebrate. Yep. So we want to celebrate all of our Latin family. And I mean, what would we do without our neighbors, our friends? What would we do without the cuisines, the art, right. the history? Everything we do exactly. has to do with our Latin family neighbors. So I think we ought to just elevate Cinco de Mayo into we should. the celebration we should. of the Latin culture we and the Latin people. Have our family and our friends and have excuse to have parties. <laughs> oh, and we have our sangria. We have our fish tacos. It's great, you know, with tortillas and tacos. And, and this is an easy thing to have people over, right? Have it a quick party and it say, is. just come over. It is. And that's what I love about it. And you can still have something healthy. Right. So instead of having regular, regular beef tacos, I love incorporating the very popular fish tacos. Well, and don't you, don't you also that you could do fish and if there are people that are vegan or whatever they can just do the vegetable, the vegetable so kind of a nice flexible bean, for people you, know, you can do so many things beans. like yeah. that and then of course sangria we'll talk about later you've got non-alcoholic sangria as well as alcohol sangria so you know you've got something for everybody and i don't know which is which so we will do a taste we'll test, do a taste test later but just to sort of show you a little bit about what we have um i don't know if you can see it or not we have one open and one not these are so beautiful. Mm. We toasted the tortillas and we have some beautiful tilapia. Mm. And I made a very nice um, uh, sour cream, a little melted cheese. I've got a little basil. I've got some uh, green cabbage. Never thought about and, basil. Yes. Oh, and infused yum. in the fish and infused in the sour cream, I've got coriander and I've got cumin. And I did a little oh. bit of chili too. It's just a little bit of tomato. So good. And it really just gives it a great flavor. Yum, yum, yum. And um, so it's just delicious. Now, what I wanted to share with you, a way that you can really make fish and the taco taste good is not only infusing the sour cream, and I've kind of got everything here, but you take your tortilla and you brown it. Hmm. But also, what I did was I took the fish and the night before, um, I went ahead and salted and peppered it, and I infused it with the coriander, the cumin, and um, let it rest overnight. Hmm. And also put a little chili powder and a little lime. Ooh. And now I put it in, and I do it in hot, sort of a medium-high temperature. I'm not going to cook it all the way through, but I just wanted you to sort of get a chance to see it. And you let it form a very nice crust. Hmm. So... If you go ahead and season it and let it spend time, I never thought about it. You know, at least an hour, then you're going to really season up the fish, so it's mm. going to really absorb the flavor. Oh, yeah. So by the time you put it on the toasted tortilla, and then you flavor up your sour cream and you build your flavors, you've got something really packed. Ooh. So that's really exciting. Now the next thing we'll talk about are the two different types of sangrias, and I've got um, all the recipes on the website. So, um, I'm going to turn this off. Um, so, first of all, we've got the recipes on the website. But take a sip of okay. the non-alcoholic, and I'm going to take a sip of Oh, alcoholic. so you gave it away. You know mm. which is which. Mm. So, anyway, basically, um, for oh this one, gosh. isn't it amazing? On the non-alcoholic, I had orange juice, and I had cranberry, and I had um, red sparkling... Uh, grape juice, mm. and I put some cut up apple and some cut up lime Yum. and some cut up tangerine. Isn't that amazing? It over ice. Isn't that amazing? And especially with this food, it's so refreshing. It's so refreshing. Oh, wow. And I guess if you liked something more than another, you can kind of be creative. Absolutely. And kind of juice up your sangria with absolutely. your favorite juices. You absolutely could. 
Yum. And how was yours? And mine was wonderful. Of course, did some blood orange and did some lime. And so I love and blood orange. This is just not And gorgeous. put sangria. So isn't it beautiful? Just very mm -hmm. sexy. Got this beautiful little Spanish. Isn't it? Oh, isn't it? Blood so, red. The first time I ever had them was in Spain. Oh, no. I love Spain. Oh, my So gosh. thank you so much for joining us today. Happy Cinco de Mayo. We love being here with you today. And I hope you'll enjoy some of the recipes that we have. Happy Cinco. <laughs> and coming from a Catholic background, God That's bless right. our food. That's right. And the shaman. <laughs> but have fun. And also, not just the food, have some instruments for your Cinco de Mayo party, okay? Things could get pretty wild. That's right. You have to do some music. I'm Kendrick. Thank you for joining us. And I'm Kathleen Hall. Do have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah.